My fellow New Yorkers, we are in a crisis situation. Today, I am declaring a state of emergency in the city of New York and issuing an executive order. What you just saw happened December 2023. So what is happening today when the crisis is still at hand? There's a lot happening in New York City and no one's listening to each other and no one's especially listening to the residents. Are they still saying it's a state of emergency? What are they doing to prevent this? What are they doing to stop some of the things that are happening? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're going against each other. Give this video a thumbs up, share it out, leave comments down below. All those things help the channel. And if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to Tommy Bikes TV, turning on your notifications. And if you're already subscribed, check to make sure you're still subscribed. Let's get into it. Power struggle is happening in New York City and is turning very ugly as is pitting Mayor Adams against Council Speaker Adrian Adams. Adams against Adams is what's happening right now. And you know Eric Adams has a lot in the closet that's about to come out. Um, so here we go. The city council speaker Adrian Adams was expected to set in motion a plan to weaken Mayor Eric Adams' authority. And the mayor quickly fought back. So what I'm doing is laying the groundwork so that I can get into all the crime that's happening right now in New York City and that's putting them in crisis. The article is reading that the public is not satisfied at all with Mayor Eric Adams' job performance. The New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams was about to make a power play. Ms. Adams was preparing to introduce legislation on Thursday that would require the mayor to obtain council approval on 21 commissioner level appointments instead of doing whatever he want, whenever he want. The move would significantly curtail the mayor's authority by adding a level of council oversight. It requires a citywide voter referendum because it proposes to curb the power of the mayor. The only way Mr. Adams could stop such a referendum is if he created a charter revision commission that would have the power to decide what, if any, ballot initiatives might be placed before voters. Well, guess what? That is what he did. Obviously, the council and the mayor's office are not on the same page. They've reached a new low, is what the article is saying. And Mr. Adams is up for re-election next year while facing federal criminal investigation and historically low polling numbers. He already faces two likely challengers from the Democratic primary. They said they're still planning on introducing this on Thursday. Also, about the mayor's tendency to put a priority on personal loyalty when filling important positions. So basically, they're saying and accusing him of putting people that he's known Known for a while in positions that maybe they're not qualified for. And I keep forgetting that the city that I'm about to talk about, everyone knows the name of the city. So where is Batman? Well, here I am. Bruce, please, you have to listen to me. Gotham has lodged 21,578 shoplifting complaints this year through May 12th, up 5% from the 20,552 thefts during the same period last year. I know I'm making a joke out of and saying, where is Batman? But this is no joking around. No jokers here. In Manhattan, they have seen 8,896 incidents of retail theft alone. This is why Walgreens... CVS, Target, and other stores are leaving the area and deciding not to even rebuild, expand, or anything. So Target announced at the end of last year the closure of nine stores across four states, including one in Harlem due to theft. They say we cannot continue operating these stores because theft and organized retail crime threatening the safety of our team and guests and contributing to unsustainable business practices. They say the Old Love Drug Store and Price Wise were 2,500 square feet stores that seemed to succeed years ago um, in the Big Apple, but now they're not. 
they are most likely closing those down to 10,000 to 20,000 square feet and in some cases down to none because they are overdrug and these chains will operate less stores in smaller spaces. Politicians play a big role in what's happening right now. Y'all know I don't care to get into politics, but I'm going to dabble a little bit today. So it's saying that the politicians have told us shoplifting is not a problem. Um, and then all of a sudden we are starting to see all these issues that are happening because many of these crimes have been downgraded by the politicians themselves. Eventually, you got to pay the piper. Retail theft, which the NYPD only recently added to its crime tracking comp stat has nearly doubled in the city in the last six years. The number of incidents in Gotham steadily climbed from 32,254 complaints in 2017 to 37,922 incidents in 2019 before falling during the height of COVID, of course, because people weren't really out in 2020. From 2021 to 2023, citywide complaints increased again from 43,892 to 59,137, according to the data. They say crime is the reason why these places are shutting down. Walgreens is on track to reduce its national footprint by roughly 200 stores in fiscal 2024 year. CVS announced plans in 2021 to shrink its national retail footprint by 900 stores, 300 each in 2022, 2023, and 2024. And they have been sticking true to their words in shutting these stores down. In the Big Apple locations are shuttering with drugstore companies um, foregoing some leases upon their expiration and putting other spaces up for sublease. In Manhattan, five former CVS outposts are on the market, according to a broker who is handling the leasing of the spaces. Walgreens has 17 former stores on the market in Manhattan, per the list of a real estate. And Rite Aid is shuttering 53 additional stores in nine states as part of the company's bankruptcy proceedings. That is on top of an initial list of 154 stores closing. And when you have local drug stores, local businesses closing down, you're losing jobs, you're losing the convenience for the residents to even shop, and it has a long-term impact on the quality of life in the community. Meanwhile, while we have migrants coming in on buses still every single week, we have Eric Adams, the mayor, finally saying, well, we need to put these people out of the places that we have them in, but where do they go? So we have money still being given to migrants. We have all these things happening. We have residents of New York City not receiving any help buying food, housing, anything, but migrants are getting the bulk of everything. And on top of that cake layer, you got the mayor who is allegedly facing investigation. Well, I'm going to say allegedly because I don't want to get but anyway, he's facing these allegations against him um, of misconduct in office and then you have this infighting going on no one's paying attention that the people of New York City are hurting the majority of them cannot afford to buy food because the price of food is so high cannot afford to buy fuel if they own a vehicle cannot afford to look for help to help them get to the stores that are further out now because they're losing stores in their communities. So y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. I'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care. I love you, but God loves you more. He created only one you. Be the best you that you can be. And when you are, go out and spread God's love. I'll call you. Don't forget to hit the like. Well, here I am.